My name is Graeme Humphreys, I'm the, the project manager for Albury Gas Stories project. I've been with the project for five years since SSE decided to develop the site. Albury Gas Storage is just that, it's a store for natural gas. When it's finished it will be the country's largest onshore gas storage facility. Our export capability is approximately 20 gigawatts, which is 10 times the size of, of Ferry Bridge Power Station in terms of energy flow, so it makes it quite big. It can provide enough gas for about 10% of the country's peak day. In 1993, British Gas built a trial well here at Albury to ensure that the salt was suitable for gas storage development. That trial well is known as Albury 1. It was drilled in 1993 using traditional vertical drilling techniques, so the wellhead is located directly above the cavern. For the remaining eight caverns at Albury, we've elected to use a technique called directional drilling. So the caverns are spaced at 450 metres between centres around the site, but all the remaining wellheads are located together on the east side of the site. The advantage of doing that is that you don't have satellite wellheads around the countryside connected by surface pipework to the, to the uh, central processing area. So it's safer, it takes less land and it's more environmentally friendly. Good morning, my name is Mel Chisholm. I work for Scottish and Southern Energy. I'm the project manager's um, assistant. And we're here on another wonderful day in Albury to give you a little uh, insight into what we do here. The gas is analysed as it comes in because we need to, uh, what they call, meet spec. It has to be within a certain set of parameters that are given to us by NG. So we analyse the gas and we transmit those signals back to NG and Warwick so they know the quality of the gas that we've got and the quality of the gas that we're putting back. To drive the, the compressors which consume 60 megawatts of power, we've had to bring a significant uh, electricity connection to site. We bring the power at 132 kV from salt end to site and then drop the, drop the voltage from 132 to 33 kV and then on down to the voltages we need to operate the various bits of plant. Once the gas arrives at site, it's compressed using three 20 megawatt compressors to pressures of up to 270 bar before it's pumped down into the caverns. The pressure in the cavern can be as high as 300 bar because the two kilometer depth of the cavern, the weight of that gas actually weighs 30 bar, so it adds pressure. And when we want the, want the gas back out, we simply open the valve at the top and the gas flows back out. Because the caverns themselves will always contain a little seawater, the gas will be damp, so we have to remove that water. So it's broken in pressure from 270 bar down to around 80 bar into a drying plant, which is, consists of silica gel, a bit like the stuff you'd have in your camera case, which absorbs the water. Once the water's out, the pressure's further reduced and it goes back on to the national transmission system. I think you have to get in perspective that we're doing something that is intrinsically hazardous. We've got half a million tonnes of gas, which is a lot of gas, in caverns a mile and a bit underground at a pressure of 5,000 psi. You have to control that. If it gets out, um, you've got a, a potentially a very hazardous situation. But there's a difference between hazard and risk. We aim to make sure that we do what's a hazardous activity um, safely. It's like flying in an aeroplane or driving a car. They're both hazardous activities, but we don't think anything of it because the risks are controlled. Process safety is about looking at the, the aims of what you're trying to do and ensuring the way you do it presents the lowest possible risk to, in terms of safety and risk to the environment. Mm -hmm.